This video is going to cover how to create this connecting rod that we see here in the two-dimensional drawing in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, there's been some questions about this, so I'm going to give you guys um, a quick demonstration. Now, one thing I want to point out is if you cut this connecting rod in half lengthwise, um, that's where I'm going to be drawing. I'm going to be drawing on the center plane. And when I extrude, I'm going, to, I'm going to extrude equally both directions. I think that's probably uh, the best way to make this an easy uh, thing to draw. Now, I will be putting all this information in sketch number one, and I'll be reusing sketch number one to create the different um, depths or distances of extrusion. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, um, I think it's best if you start the origin at either one of these two uh, circles, essentially, either the pin end or the big end, as they would say. I'm going to start at the pin end, or the smaller of the two ends. And I'm just going to be throwing in dimensions as I go. Like, that's usually the best way to do it. Sometimes I'll draw more, sometimes I will... Put in constraints. Um, constraints really are the ticket to not having to come up with extra dimensions. Ideally, when someone provides you with a drawing, uh, you have all the dimensions that you need, and the and the object can be fully constrained, not by making more dimensions, but by using constraints. That's an ideal world. Does that always happen? Not exactly, but. Um, that should be the first assumption, I think. All right. Tangents work pretty well for making these arcs very smooth, but I'm also going to use the vertical constraint to lock these together. I do have a couple dimensions here that I need to put in. This is half an inch. The distance between these two guys is 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch. And probably overdoing it, but yeah, just checking it. Okay, so I'm kind of working left to right here. Now I have another set of arcs. These ones are much bigger. It's nice when I can get the tangent to go in there on its own. Doesn't always work. Line these endpoints up. Probably line up these endpoints as well. Put my size in there, which is radius of two inches, and these are both equal. Okay, now I have kind of this step thing going on, and then I have two, looks like perfectly 180 degree arcs here. So I'm going to start with the arcs. Oop, I'm going to start there. I have a smaller one, and then I have a bigger one. And I do have dimensions there. And 1.25. And I know these are all 180. So number one is these are concentric, share the same center point. And number two, lots of verticals. Because that makes it 180 degrees. Alright, let me pull this guy back in a little bit. Now I have some straight lines here, so I'm just gonna kind of do this step thing. Step, and these are all perpendicular. And I'm basically going to mirror that exact thing I just did. And that goes to the inside arc. All right, now dimension time. So this is 0.5. This is 0.25. And what I have, I have a distance here. 0.75 and the distance, so let's pull this out back out. Distance of this entire shoulder of three quarters or 0.75. Okay. I can see here that all this is on the same horizontal line, so that should fix this up nicely. And then equals on the two sides. Punch out. Them. 
if they're not already, which they are. Okay, now I have a slot in the middle, and I have some dimensions for that slot. The outside arcs, radius of 0.25, 3 inches center to center. And from the small end center point to that center point is 1.5. And the same thing going down on the right side, which is, for whatever reason, a lot of people don't see that 2 inches. Make sure you put that in there. Now, let's make sure that this slot knows it needs to be on that center point. And now let's see what's moving. Okay, so that slot didn't. So that slot needs to be lined up horizontally with the origin. Good. And that was it. As you can see, I'm fully constrained, bottom right. Now we need to extrude. Now, like I said, I'm going to treat this sketch as the mid plane, and I'm going to extrude both ways. Now, if we look at this sketch here, I have different distances. The um, This part, the beam, is thinner than both ends. So what I'm going to do is the beam first, and I'm going to come back and extrude these different distances with additional steps, because I can only extrude one distance at a time. And the inner web part that's recessed, I can come back and cut it later. I could do... Um, I'm going to do something a little different this time, where I'm going to leave it and come back and do it, uh, extrude it later. Why not? Now, you could extrude all these now, but once you extrude them, it's actually hard to access the um, sketch again. It's a little cumbersome, so I'm just going to leave it there and come back and do additional sketches by sharing this sketch, or I, I can make it visible and do the same thing. So now I'm going to extrude this outside, and what's that distance? That is one inch, and this is also one inch too, even though it gives a slightly different way of understanding that. Not only want the outside... And that is going to be both ways, a total of one inch. And I can do this step as well. Okay. That's good. And I'm also noticing that my first extrusion was a little long. There it goes. I had the wrong direction stated. All right. Now, if I'm starting at a half an inch and I'm taking away an eighth of an inch on both sides, then I'm going to be left with... 0.25 inches. So that's going to be my distance for this guy. So 0.25. That will give me that recess that I'm looking for. Now the last thing I need to do, I have all my um, extrusions on that first sketch done. I just need to do another one here and round these out. And that'll be easy to do. I'm actually going to make the first sketch invisible. It's going to be a little easier on me. I'm going to sketch here. Now this one should be easy. Circle in the middle. I could mirror both of these, but it's only a couple steps. I'm going to do it manually. I do an arc. And arc the other side. A couple dimensions will make this perfect. Quarter inch holes on both sides. Use the equal. Make sure I put the lines here so that I can extrude cut it. Got to have the complete profile to do any type of extrusion. Okay. Let's see. I see I'm not touching there, so I can put that in. Oh, it moved on me. Let's see if I can make that concentric. And that should make it fully constrained. Perfect. Now just extrude, cut that, and this model will be done. We're going to go through all. Make sure you get the hole. Review tells you what you're going to get, and there you go. Connecting rod is 100% done. Not too hard, right? Just using extrusions and sketches.